There's a few people out there using the term mystic, um, and I believe that these people are self-declared atheists, and that's rather interesting. Uh, the term mystic to describe themselves. There's the modern mystic, although I think that may be a ironic title. Uh, but then there's Mystic of the Sands, who does strike me as something of a mystic. Um, I am fascinated with mysticism. And one of the interesting things about mysticism is the fact that it's come down to us as just magic, myth. Uh, I guess that owes its present connotation to the fact that, you know, mystery religions were where it would have come from where you'd have to go in and get initiated all in all these weird private rites, you know, say to Isis or Mithras or something like that. Um, Serapis. Um, <clears throat> and that's led us to the belief that, or the feeling that, mysticism is just rubbish. It's just uh, the stuff you cook up and you have a bunch of weird ceremonies and you don't and you're not allowed to tell anybody about them and you know it's just uh, closed door stuff behind which uh, you do odd things to become a part of uh, this mystery cult or something or that's the way it worked in the ancient world now mysticism seems to be uh, thought of as you want direct experience of God or whatever it is direct experience of the metaphysical I don't know um, <clears throat> I like mysticism myself. In fact, I believe that the um, type of, I don't know what you'd call it, discipline that interests me the most, or the type of philosophy that interests me most, is along those lines. I want a direct experience of something. Um, but what I want is a direct experience of reality, or the truth, or whatever you want to call that. Um, a lot of people especially here on YouTube, but I think in general, in our society, tend to see philosophy as something you talk about and um, you, you know, expound upon, you write books about, you discuss this kind of thing. Um, if you ever engage in a long philosophical discussion, one of the interesting things is you, you can make the sense, you, you can leave a, a long philosophical discussion with the sense of having accomplished something and having arrived at an interesting conclusion, um, even though it took you longer than you would have expected had you just sort of read off your respective positions to each other, because oftentimes you have to go over things again and again and again and again to make sure, uh, or to be, make reasonably sure that what you said to the other person is what that person heard. Hence the fact that you get people pulling their hair out all the time, those of us who keep their hair, um, saying, look, we've been through all of this. Well, yes and no. You've been through it verbally, but when you're using language to talk about experience, you, I think that it's kind of presumptuous just to assume that um, <clears throat> once we've arrived at a certain conclusion, we can then move on and forget having arrived at the previous conclusion. We'll just go back to that conclusion. And you end up building something of a house of cards, I think. And what you'd get at the end of that is you get <clears throat> um, weird philosophies like the Benetarian asymmetry, um, where he just takes axioms and pushes them to their reductio ad absurdum. Um, because his philosophy is absurd. <laughs> um, so I think that actually um, mysticism may be actually carrying a lot of baggage that it doesn't really deserve because when you're talking, what you're talking about is not the words themselves. You're talking about the experience that the words are used to describe. And experience, well, you don't have to believe in the metaphysical, you don't have to believe in God, you don't have to believe in any of that stuff to subscribe to the notion that ex that experience exists. I personally say that experience exists uh, because, well, I, that flows from my base point, which is the cogito, and I exist, and I have experiences. Maybe my experiences are not accurate, but I have the experience. <clears throat> So I want to experience everything that's around me. All that. Okay. 
So I want to experience it. Uh, I want to see it for what it actually is. Um, what is all that? Well, matter, energy, empty space, functions of each other, etc., etc. Okay, but what I see is a bunch of things out there, but things that I have sort of thingness that I've placed on these things. Um, so if I want to see all that for what it actually is, and I want to see it uncluttered by the projections that I myself uh, project onto everything, I'm going to have to work on my own perceptions. What's that, if not mysticism? So, <clears throat> I think that um, mysticism and direct experience are of more value philosophically than words, and words are essentially just the map and the experience is the terrain. Although some people might argue with that and say that words are the map reality is the terrain and experience I guess is the tools by which you draw the map I don't know but you know you can shuffle these metaphors around all you like but it, it does seem to be a differentiation between what's out there and what I experience uh, for example I know when I look around I showed a cityscape here pretty miserable day um, and there's radio waves flying all over the place that I don't see, but science tells me they're there. I don't see them. Why, aren't, why, why can't I see them? Because my senses aren't equipped to tell me what's there. Or at least everything, because this isn't relevant, I guess, uh, to my functionality. So I guess I never evolved the senses to see things like that, like ultraviolet light or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so there's more out there than I can actually see. How am I going to experience all of that? Because, as I said, the, the very fact that there's things going on that I can't pick up on means that what I see in my perceptions are inaccurate. What would you call a discipline that seeks to give me direct experience of what is actually happening around me? <laughs> that has to be mysticism, because you're going beyond what your senses can tell you, because you know that there's more there, or at least your instruments. Um, tell you that there's more than what you can see out there, but the, your instruments give you a weird sort of picture of things. Like, let's say I could, uh, I had an ultraviolet camera or something, and I could pick up all the UV light and nothing else. Would it look the same? Would I look the same if I was seeing myself in strictly ultraviolet light that I could somehow see? What would it look like? What does ultraviolet light look like? What does light look like that I can't see? <laughs> What does the invisible look like? Well, <laughs> what does anything really look like when you think about it? Because anything that I see is just an interpretation and an addition of what's out there. My brain edits things. My eyes edit things. Um, what is actually there? Mysticism. Um, so I don't really think that when we discuss philosophy, when we come up with maxims or dialectic or logic or anything, we're really discussing anything ap apart from the ivory tower. If you want to take philosophy and put it into your life, put it into your head even, I guess, not the terminology, not name dropping or using the right terminology or making sure that you're, you know, following the correct procedures, the correct laws, rules, whatever. No, no, no. What's actually there? I'm reminded of <clears throat> one of my favorite uh, maxims from that kind of thing, that kind of perception uh, by Picasso, where, and I keep coming back to this one, he said to, his, to anyone who was interested in learning to be a Cubist painter, don't paint what your eyes see. Paint what you know is actually there, because there is a difference. <laughs> um, and Cubist painting had wanted to you know, it was an experiment, I guess, and I'm still fascinated by Cubist painting. Um, it's an idea that you should portray everything in two dimensions that actually has three or perhaps more dimensions. How do you do that? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? In a certain way, Cubist painting is a form of mysticism. 
And I don't think mysticism has anything at all to do with mysteries or religion. Um, or at least it needn't have anything at all to do with any of that. Um, one could say that mysticism is dealt with very well in science fiction movies like um, The Matrix, where somebody wants to know what's actually happening around him, even because all of his senses don't tell him what's going on. You know, Plato's cave, that kind of thing. Um, direct experience of reality, I think. That's mysticism. You can talk philosophy all you want, but you don't really know if you've actually accomplished anything, because reality is all going to take place up here. Mysticism again. <laughs>